Naples and Benevento both claim the honor of having given birth to Januarius. He is said to have been descended of the ancient family of the Sanity, who had made war with the Romans and were masters and dukes of Benevento. There are no historical records of the first years of Saint Januarius, but it is certain that his parents were Christians and that he was esteemed the most learned and pious of the clergy, for which reason he was unanimously chosen bishop of Benevento upon a vacancy having occurred in that see. The humility of the saint induced him most resolutely to refuse that dignity until he was obliged to accept it by a command from the Pope, who was at that time Saint Caius or Saint Marcellinus. Our saint undertook the government of his church during the persecution of Diocletian and Maximian, which circumstance gave him noble opportunities of manifesting the extent of his zeal for the faith of Jesus Christ. Not content with propagating and maintaining the faith in his own diocese, he ran through the neighboring cities, converting pagans and assisting and encouraging the faithful. In the discharge of these duties, he became acquainted with a holy deacon of the city of Miseno named Socius, with whom he formed a most intimate friendship, for as Socius was one day reading the gospel to the people, Saint Januarius saw a most resplendent flame upon his head, from which fact he predicted that the pious deacon would be crowned with martyrdom. The prophecy was soon fulfilled. For after a few days, Socius was arrested as a Christian and brought before Draconius, governor of the district, who having in vain endeavored with promises and threats to make him prevaricate, caused him to be cruelly scourged, tortured, and sent to prison. He was here frequently visited the Christians, but the deacon Proculus and his fellow citizens, Eutysius and Acutius, were particularly attentive to him, and Saint Januarius was no sooner apprised of his arrest than he repaired to the prison to comfort and encourage him. Meanwhile, Draconius was removed to another place by the emperor and succeeded in the government by Timothy, who upon his arrival at Nola, having heard of the preaching of Saint Januarius and the assistance which he afforded to the faithful in the neighborhood, ordered him to be arrested and brought before him, bound hand and foot, on being presented to the new governor. Our saint was commanded to sacrifice, but immediately rejected the iniquitous proposal with horror and contempt, whereupon Timothy ordered him to be thrown into a furnace. The order was instantly executed, but the saint received not the least hurt, and although this miraculous preservation excited the wonder of all present, it was so far from making any salutary impression of the tyrant that it rendered him more furious and cruel than before. And he accordingly ordered that the saint's body should be stretched upon the rack until his every nerve should be broken. As soon as these proceedings were known to Benevento Festus, the bishop's deacon, and Desiderius, his lector forthwith departed to visit their holy prelate in the name of his entire flock. But Timothy, being informed of their arrival at Nola, caused them to be arrested, and their de depositions to be taken regarding the motives of their journey. They answered that, holding as they did subordinate offices in the church of the good bishop, they thought it their duty to visit their superior in prison and minister to him whatever assistance it might be in their power to afford. Upon hearing this declaration, the tyrant commanded that they should be loaded with chains and made to walk before his chariot to Pozzoli, to be there delivered to wild beasts together with their pastor. Immediately after their arrival, they were exposed in the amphitheater when Saint Januarius said to the rest, Be of good heart, brethren, behold, the day of our triumph has arrived. Let us confidently give our lives for Jesus Christ, who fought saved to give his for us. The beasts were let loose upon them in the presence of a great multitude. 
but although they ran towards the martyrs as it were to devour them, they cast themselves before them and licked their feet. The miracle was evident to all, and a deep murmur was heard to run through the amphitheater. The God of the Christians is the only true God. The effect produced by this miracle made Timothy fear a general sedition. And he accordingly gave orders that the martyrs should be led to the public square and beheaded. But St. Januarius, in passing the governor, prayed that the Lord might strike him blind for his own confusion and the conversion of the, pe- of the people. This prayer having taken instant effect, the tyrant delayed the execution on the sen- of the sentence and besought the holy bishop to forgive the maltreatment he had received and to pray for the restoration of his sight. St. Januarius did so, and the miracle was followed by the conversion of 5,000 pagans. But Timothy, fearing lest he should lose the favor of the emperor, ordered his officers to have the last sentence privately, but instantly executed. While our saint was being led to Vulcano, the place selected for his last struggle, an aged Christian followed him, imploring with many tears that he would give him something to keep for his sake. The good bishop, moved by the devotion of the old man, told him that he had nothing to give, except his handkerchief, which, as he needed it to bandage his eyes in receiving the stroke of death, he could not let him have until his, until after his martyrdom. On arriving at Volcano, St. Januarius tied the handkerchief over his eyes and repeating the words, Into thy hands, O Lord, I command my spirit. He was decapitated on the 19th of September towards the close of the 3rd century together with his companions, Socius, Festus, Proculus, Desiderius, Eutysius, and Acutius, holy martyrs, orate pro nobis. Pray for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The reason I deleted many YouTube shorts from this channel is because YouTube does not suggest the long-form content or the longer videos to all the subscribers here. The algorithm received the information that all the subscribers only want to watch YouTube shorts, which is actually not profitable for this channel. Sadly, there is no bridge between YouTube Shorts algorithm to YouTube Normal Videos algorithm. If you can join Patreon for only $1, then it's gonna be super massive help for this channel. And you can also watch videos with no advertisement. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you for your help and your prayers. God bless you all. In the name of et Vili, Espiritus Sancti. Amen. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment down below. God bless you all.